Beloved, you are welcome to another episode of The Way of Salvation. And I believe that if you are following me, you have understood the glory of God and what it means to him as the only creator. If you call yourself a Christian, never downplay the glory of God. God expects those who profess to be his children to carry his glory in every circumstance of our lives. As I was sharing in the last episode, no matter the situation or the condition you may find yourself in, never put away the glory of God. When you do that, it means you are limiting God in what he can do. And if you, if, you, if you are limiting God in what he can do, whereas you yourself, you are his creation, don't you know it's, you, are, you are very annoying? Huh? If I did something including yourself, and you say I cannot do something, don't you see you are annoying me? That is why I told you that those who put the glory of God down attract his wrath and i've been saying this to church people if god could be angry with moses of all people then we need to be careful and why was god angry with him it was because of what i'm sharing today never come near the glory of god never try to speak and put his glory down else you belittle him and attract his wrath. Today as we continue, let me show you what demons are causing people to do with the glory of God. Agree with me as we go to Numbers chapter 20 and I'll be reading from verse 1 to 6. Then the children of Israel, the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month and the people stayed in Kadesh and Miriam died there and was buried there. Now there was no water for the congregation so they gathered together against Moses and Aaron. And the people contended with Moses and spoke saying, If only had we died when our brethren died before the Lord. Why have you brought up this assembly of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our animals should die here? And why have you made us come out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? <laughs> it is not a place for grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, nor is there any water to drink. So Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly of the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and they fell on their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. Amen. Today I want to show you something deep again. Why people put the glory of God down. Is because even demons know that no one can come near the glory of God. As a result, they will push human beings to put his glory down in order to attract his punishment. I'm saying it again. Demons know how valuable, how important God holds his glory. So they will push you to say something or do something about his glory to attract his punishment. When we come to the, the scripture we just read, Moses saw the glory of God in the tabernacle of the door. The Lord's glory appeared to Moses. Listen to it, the analysis carefully. In verse 6 of Numbers chapter 20, the glory of God appeared to Moses. Now, 
this is seeing what God can do. Now, when you read further, it, Moses was the same person who said and spoke as if God couldn't bring water out of the rock. And my point today is, why did Moses behave like that? Having seen the glory of God. Why did he speak as if God's glory was nothing? Or it was impossible for God to act like that. He had seen the glory of God before. But at this particular time, he behaved differently. Let me say it again this way. Moses had seen water come out of rock before. And the, the issue of water came up again when there was another rock. In the same way, as I said earlier, he had seen the glory of God before. But he put the glory of God away afterwards. What was the reason? The reason was in verse 3 of Numbers chapter 20. The people contended with Moses. The people contended with Moses. So Moses, who had seen God's glory before, let it down. Behaved otherwise. Spoke contrary. Behaved as if God was unable. Why? Because of the way the people spoke. So that is to tell you that if you are around people who are negative, no matter what you had seen before, you will be compared to forget what you saw before. A man who has seen God's glory, he was, in fact, when you talk about a, a prophet or a man of God who has seen it all, there's no one to be compared with Moses. He saw God face to face. He has seen God's glory before. So why? God told me it was because of the people around him. That's why I'm here to tell you that no matter what you have seen, you have seen before in your life, if you are not careful with the people around you, you will forget what you have seen. There are many people in this world who have seen deep visions about God and what he can do. Why they forget those visions is that when they enter into a circumstance, then they forget what they had earlier on seen. And that is exactly what is going on today. The world is confronted with the coronavirus issue. It has baffled doctors and until now, there is no remedy. And what is shocking is that God expects us. It's, it's, a, it's a test. God is testing humanity to see whether we will still carry his glory. But in the midst of this, we have let down his glory. And as I said, why are we doing that? We are doing that because of the grumbling of the people. When they complained against Moses, he forgot about what he just saw. You see, when you are with people who talk too much and they talk, and they talk too negative, you, you forget what God can do. And that affected Moses. If that could affect Moses, it can affect you too. So be very careful of the people you surround yourself with. In other words, be very careful of your association. And demons can use certain people to trap Christians like this. Many Christians are trapped to put the glory of God down because of the people who are surrounded them. They are speaking negative. So it affects you. Many Christians are guilty. Because when they go to work. And they are around unbelievers. And they begin to talk. You will be shocked that Christians fall down. Because of what the unbelievers are saying. You see Moses was surrounded with unbelievers. Those who didn't believe God. So, uh, so they, listen to what they said. Hey, it was serious. Listen to what they said in verse 5. They said that God had brought them to this evil place. 
Hey, it was serious. God said, I'm taking you to a place of milk and honey. And they said, God has brought them to an evil place. They made God bad. In this era of the coronavirus, people are speaking negative. People are speaking bad because of the people around them. Even so-called pastors are speaking very bad. They have made God very small. Why? It's because of the people around them. In, in Moses' instance, it was fellow Israelites who were speaking negative. In our day, it is medical doctors and people and unbelievers who are speaking negative. Medical doctors today are acting as if God is nothing. They are the only ones who have the solution. And when you listen to the messages, and when I say the, uh, the grumblings of unbelievers, today we are listening to the grumblings of medical doctors through the pictures and the messages they are showing on television. New people who have contracted the virus. These are the people who have contracted the virus. How many people are dying? This, this, this number of people are dying. This number of people are dying. So when you are hearing the grumblings of these unbelievers, you throw away the glory of God. But God Almighty can never be put down. His glory should be carried all the time, no matter the circumstance. So if you are doing what Moses did because of the people around him today, by listening to the messages and the grumblings and the negative talk of medical doctors who want to put fear in people by the numbers they put on television, you will attract God's anger. Because you will tend to believe them and disbelieve God. God does not expect that from his people at all. Hey, it affected Moses and it shocked me. I feel bad that this could affect Moses. In, uh, uh, let, let me show you another thing. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, God said something about David in 1 Samuel. He said he was the man of his, of his own heart. That means David's heart was equated with God's. He was a man who was connected with God. Why did God describe him like that? I want to show you. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, Israel was confronted with a Goliath. Goliath baffled them. The people were afraid. Nobody spoke as if God could, could bring this man, this huge man who stood on a mountain down. Nobody spoke like that. All of them were dead scared that this Goliath would defeat them. And a young boy, 17 year old boy, a teenager came on the scene. Let's hear what that teenager said. Then David said to Saul, Saul was the king whose heart had failed, who was terrified by the sight of Goliath. Let no man's heart fail because of him. Hallelujah. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. I like the first sentence. Let no man's heart fail because of him. They were confronted with the Goliath that baffled the whole Israel and the king had even run away. But a young boy came in and said, let no one's heart fail. I'm here to tell you as the servant of God, let no one's heart fail because of the coronavirus. That is the Goliath that has confronted our day. And we shouldn't be afraid. Our God is still alive. The glory of God is still around. It is demons who are pushing people to be afraid. And when you are afraid, you have put down the glory of God. When David said that, David said, This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. The man who was terrifying the people. Oh, listen to what the teenager said. And I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day... I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the earth and the wild beasts of the earth. 
that all the earth, listen to this part. This is what I like. I like this part so much. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Hallelujah. The king had run away. A young boy came in to say that you don't see the glory of God, a king. King and Israel, you don't know what God can do, eh? I'm going to kill this man that you will know that there is a God here in Israel. Hallelujah. That is what God expects his servants to do. He calls us to tell the world about him. If you don't know, I'm telling you. The sole work of a servant of God is to tell people about his potency and ability. If you don't do that, you are failed. God didn't call us to take money from people. God didn't call us to lord over them. He called us to show a picture to them. It's like you are holding a picture and God wants you to show the picture to the people. It's like you are holding the Bible and you are told, hey, the whole world, look at Jesus. Hey, unbelievers, look at what my God can do. Hey, unbelievers, look, look. Look at, my, look at what my God can do. Look, 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 look. You see? That is exactly what God wants us to do. He has, put, he, has, he has given me a picture. And I want everybody to see that picture. For David to do that, you can understand why God said his heart is connected to my heart. David was the small boy, the only one who came in to say that God was able. His glory was still around to handle the Goliath. So I'm here to tell you, if all the men of God would downplay the glory of God and speak as if God cannot heal and stop this pandemic in every place where you may be listening to me or watching me from, I'm here to tell you, that I'm serving the same God in the Bible. He is able. Because as I told you, this is a small virus. God is able. If people are declared dead, if they say you have cancer and you are afraid, it's because of the message you heard. Medical doctors who are evil, who are pushed by demons, can put fear in you. But if you hold the banner of God and say that I believe in God Almighty, that He's able to heal me, He has the final word, you will live and not die. Because David came in to demonstrate that God's power is still alive, God lifted him up. Let me connect the story I've just read today to you together. In Moses' situation, he listened to the people and became dead scared and forgot about the glory of God. Let it down. In David's story, he didn't listen to the people. Have you seen the connection? One man of God listened to the people and got dead scared. Because when David came on the scene, some of them looked at him and said, have you seen his size? The people tried to frighten David in the same way as they tried to frighten Moses. But David was wise. He didn't listen to them. When they were talking about Goliath, he was talking about what will be handed down to him when he kills him. Hallelujah. So the message is simple. If you listen to the flesh, you forget about the glory of God. If you listen to the people, the people will let you let down the glory of God. Now, if you let down the glory of God, it means that you are falling from the spirit into physical. When you see God's glory, it means you don't listen to people. That's what David did. Moses let down the glory of God because he looked down and listened to the people. And if you listen to the people, it means you are dealing in flesh. I'm saying it again. If you listen to people, it means you are dealing in flesh. So if you are listening to medical doctors, you are listening to flesh. And when you are dealing in flesh, your faith is gone. And when your faith is gone, you cannot please God. 
as the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Now without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if I put my points together, if you want to please God, continue to look up to his glory. When, when you look up to his glory, you will not listen to what human beings say. And when you will not listen to what human beings say, it means you are still operating in the spirit. And when you operate in the spirit, it means your faith will never be affected. And always you will give God the glory and not allow demons to push you to put the glory of God down to attract his wrath. I'm here to tell you that don't listen to the medical doctors. God has the final say. Don't be terrified and lose your faith and the glory of God because of the news you hear. My God is still alive. That's why I'm here to encourage and tell you all the time that with God, all things are possible. God bless you. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Pastor Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.